you didn't include it or whatever. So you never really know how auditions are gonna go and what the director's thinking, what the Japanese creators may be thinking if they're able to weigh in on it, uh, what the original actor sounds like, how does that weigh in on it. I'll tell you something else about voice acting and demos. Don't ever put a voice on a demo that you're not prepared to do for 12 hours. You may be able to make your voice do some pretty creepy things, right? For one line. But if you put that on a demo and somebody goes, oh my gosh, this is the greatest, creepiest voice. We're casting this person to play this character in this anime series that has 200 episodes. You're screwed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because your voice will be so, you know what I'm saying? You can't. There are some things that you can do with your voice. You guys know what I'm talking about. But you can't maintain it. It's not something you want to do for very long, right? Like a, like, like maybe a golem voice or something, you know. Something that's very scratchy. Yeah, that's really great. That's very demonic and it sounds cool. And you'll be dead in about nine minutes. You know what I mean? So you always be careful if you're ever gonna make a demo, or you're ever gonna audition for something, be careful that you don't do something that you can't do for very long. <laughs> you know what I mean? Question, yes. If I could get any tattoo symbol from Full Metal, what would I get? Ooh. You know, I would probably have to get that one. I mean, I couldn't get the Ouroboros, like the snake eating its tail. I'm not a monkey I can't get the blood seal. I'm not out. I'd have to get the flamel, right? I'm getting warm. Thank you for letting me borrow that. Um, I'd have to. I'd have to do the flamel. Question? Uh, yes, sir. Everybody to hear the question. So I've seen multiple voice actors really get into the characters. Like the one I think of the most is Mark Hamill as the Joker. He seemed like distort his uh, features. Like what do you do to help you get into the character? Uh, it depends on the character. Um, I'll tell you a funny story. It's I, I know it's kind of lame, but it's my life. <laughs> There was a character that I did in a show many, many years ago called, uh, the, the, the show was called Princess Nine. It was about a girls baseball team, high school girls baseball team. And I played the captain of the boys baseball team who had a relationship with the captain of the girls baseball team. And then ultimately they have to play each other, you know. I love this character. Like, his name is Hiroki Takasuki. Of all the roles I had played up to that point, I felt like he was most like me. You know what I mean? I loved sports, played every sport there was, loved baseball, loved this character. He was kind, he was a really nice guy, and I wanted, like, I loved him. So I went to a sporting goods store in Houston, and I, I had them custom make me a baseball jersey that looked like Hiroki's from the show. I showed him pictures, the, the, uh, the kanji letters on the front in red, his white jersey with con red kanji letters, and then on the back, his number and the name Takasugi, and they were all embroidered on, like, like high-end class, you know, quality baseball jerseys. And I wore it every time I went to record that show. I loved it, so I loved that so much. And I had baseball caps made with the K on them. They were blue caps with a red K, this Kisaragi High School. Um, so that's kind of a nerdy thing, but when it comes to getting into, into character for certain roles, um, I, I just, I, I don't do anything specific, you know, it's like I don't like lay off milk for a week if I'm going to record Ed, right, you know, nothing like that, but once you've done the character for a little while, you're able to, to fall into it pretty quickly. Like the moment you walk into a, a, the recording booth and the picture comes up on the TV screen and there's your character. You're like, ah, there he is. You know, there's my boy. And then you start listening to the scene and watching it unfold and you immediately reconnect with him. Um, I think that's probably, it probably has something to do with just acting. Just 
background and experience in doing something like that? You know, it's like anything that you've done for a little while. You kind of walk into it pretty quickly, you know? Um, but there, I do, I'm sure I can torque my face and, you know, do those kind of things like Mark does, depending on the character. Oh, I'll tell you a funny story. This is a good story. There was a scene where Ed was fighting somebody in Full Metal. <laughs> Big fight, right? So we're recording the scene, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> and, and following the, the action and, you know, jumping and everything. And the, the director kept stopping because the engineer was hearing <laughs> this thumping noise. And he didn't know what it was, and I didn't know what it was. I'm just standing in the booth, right? There's the mic, and, ah, 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 and, uh, and the engineers are like, Let's, I'm sorry, but I have to ask you to do it again. Because there's this, I don't know what that knocking noise was. Maybe it was somebody in another office, you know, pounding, whatever. Let's do it again. So he did it again. And there it was again. And the engineer's like, dude, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just standing here. And they're like, I'm sorry, we have to do it again because we can't have this audio track with this thumping in it. So the third time, yeah, yeah, ah, you know, doing that whole thing. <laughs> and while I'm in the middle of recording this fight, the director opens the, the studio door like, to see if anything's happening in there. And what we realized was that when I was fighting, I was jumping up and down in the studio, in the booth. And the booths, the recording booths, are suspended. They're not on the ground because you don't want to pick up vibrations from the building. So they suspend them. They're a little bit off the ground. So I'm jumping up and down like a wrestling, you know, ring. And that's what the sound was. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. So we get into it a little bit sometimes. Uh, yes, hold on a second. I need a little bit of this. Um, yes, I love your sweater. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, have you um, ever watched an anime before you played the character? Only a few times. And the one time, the very first time I did it, was Oran High School. And I gotta tell you, I fell in love with Tomaki. Now, you would normally think that may be a good thing, right? But it was not a good thing, because the show hadn't even been licensed yet. Funimation had not gotten the rights to, to, to Oran. So, for all I knew, if it even did get licensed, what if it got licensed in Canada? Remember our conversation yesterday? If it got licensed in Canada, Italian boy here is not gonna be playing Tomaki. Right? But it got licensed by Funimation. So that was one step closer, right? But still, they hadn't even had auditions yet. And I was so in love with Tomaki and that show. I had, Caitlin Glass gave me a disc with some episodes of Oran. And I fell in love with the show. I loved it so much. And you never want to fall in love with a character before you get cast because it's kind of jinx, you kind of jinx yourself. You know, you, like all your hopes are riding. I gotta get this guy, I gotta get this guy, you know? And uh, so when I went into audition, I auditioned for several different characters besides Tomaki, but that was the only one I cared about. I did Tomaki's audition first, and then I auditioned for one of the twins, and then I auditioned for Kyoya, and then I left, and I was like, oh, I just wanna be Tomaki. And so, as good fortune would have it, I, uh, I got cast as Tomaki. But that was one of the first ones that I ever watched ahead of time. There was another show that, that a, a company sent me a clip of it, and they said, we'd like you to audition for this, but knowing, knowing like who you are and the way you feel about your, you know, your faith and, and all of that, you may not want to be in this show. <laughs> So I was really curious. I'm like, ooh, what show could this be? And they sent me like a, a, a link to 
one of the episodes. And I watched her for about two minutes, and I was like, yeah, no. No, I can't do this. So, uh, so that's, the, that's the flip side. Sometimes you watch something beforehand, and you know that, oh, this isn't really something I want to do. Question? Yes. Can Ed go into this shorty squad? There you go. See, there it is. <laughs> you want to hear short rant, don't you? Sure he could. All day long, he'd be the president of the shorty squad. He would be the king of the shorty squad. You know my favorite, one of my favorite little short rants was when he was crawling through the air conditioning vent. Remember that? They're trying to sneak into that building. And he's crawling through there and he's like, hey, it's actually good that I'm so small. For one second. And then he's like, no, it's not. And he's like kicking and screaming in the little vent. Oh my gosh. I love it. And they put the little arrows in. I love it. Question? Let's have a guy, guy question. Yes, sir. So back to the whole uh, voice acting thing. What would you say was the most uh, throat killer, you know, voice you've done? Oh, I do. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. You know, anybody wearing that shirt and that hat, asking that question, you know, he already knows the answer. You guys, Broly was such a throat killer. And you know what's funny? I had no idea that it would be that hard. When I first got cast, I thought, this is awesome. I get to be in Dragon Ball Z, right? And after the very first recording session, I, I just like, oh my God, how do those guys do this for 270 episodes, you know? I had all new respect for 